Not too many people know this, and that is why I'm sharing this with you. This is where the federal government grows medical marijuana. Question is, since it's legal under federal law, obviously, and the states make it legal, then why is it still illegal? In 1996, California passed Proposition 215, making the use of medical marijuana legal. It also set no limit on the number of plants a patient could grow. Todd McCormick decided to grow 4,000 plants here in this Bel Air mansion. He suffers from histiocytosis X, has five fused vertebrae, when the federal government decided to make an example out of him. After this case, it was quite clear that the federal government would only tolerate up to 99 plants being grown here in the state of California. Peter McWilliams found out in 1996 that he had non-Hodgkin's lymphoma and AIDS on the same day. With the help of doctors from UCLA and using his body as a guinea pig, they found almost a cure for AIDS. With full blown out cancer and on the verge of death, Doctors were able to lower his viral load, cure him from cancer, and reduce his viral load all the way down to zero. AIDS research has become that advanced here in the United States. So Peter teamed up with Todd McCormick because he wanted a book to be written called How to Grow Medical Marijuana. During the writing of the book, Todd McCormick was busted for growing 4,000 marijuana plants in his Bel Air mansion. Keep in mind that he was following state law. And Peter's crime, Peter's crime was agreeing to publish a book called How to Grow Medical Marijuana so that he could save his fellow man and fellow sufferers of the AIDS virus. In mid-March 1996, Peter was diagnosed with both AIDS and cancer on the same day. To treat his illness, Peter was prescribed a myriad of drugs that all seemed to produce nausea and eventually make him throw up. In 1996, California voters passed Proposition 215, making the use of medical marijuana legal. The only medication that worked for Peter in controlling the nausea and his constant vomiting was medical marijuana. While on medical marijuana, Peter could keep in his important AIDS medications and it virtually eliminated the AIDS virus in his body. Because of his findings, Peter teamed up with Todd McCormick, a cancer survivor and cannabis cultivating expert, to publish a book called How to Grow Medical Marijuana. During the writing of the book, Todd McCormick was busted for growing medical marijuana in a Bel Air mansion. Todd's income had come from the book advance from Peter McWilliams and the federal government named Peter a drug kingpin. I'm not a drug kingpin. I'm, 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 I'm a sick person. I have AIDS. I've been trying to treat my illness. I've been trying to stay alive. I thought that in 1996, when I was diagnosed with both AIDS and cancer, that I was facing the, the real challenge of my life. Turns out that the real challenge of my life is coming from my own government. Federal Judge George King ordered Peter McWilliams off his medical marijuana, which was responsible for keeping in his AIDS medication. And so the judge is being asked essentially, please keep me alive at least until my trial. I'm not asking the judge to make a decision for the world. I'm not asking the judge to make a decision for everyone. I'm simply asking the judge would you please keep me alive until this trial begins in September when the larger issues can be determined. There are large issues to be determined in this case, such as whether all patients should be entitled to medical marijuana who have a doctor's prescription. That's not the issue we're asking here. The specific issue that we're asking the court is please make an emergency exception so that I might be alive eight months from now when the trial begins. Also keep in mind that the federal system does not follow speedy trials. The earliest trial date we can get begins September 7th, and that may be extended. So it's not as though the trial is next week and it will be determined by a jury. It's that we have seven, eight more months um, plus the trial time, so we won't have a determination until at least mid-October uh, in all of this. 
So between now and then, the likelihood of me developing an opportunistic infection and dying is extremely high. I feel that I have a good defense. I feel that I'm entitled uh, to take medical marijuana in general. I believe that every person who has a doctor's prescription is entitled to take medical marijuana. I, however, do not believe that my day in court should be taken from me. And that's essentially what's happening. Todd McCormick's urine analysis was found to have THC in it, a chemical that is in Marinol, a prescription pain medication, and it is also the active ingredient in marijuana. McCormick is a cancer survivor who has five years of vertebrae that leave him in constant pain. He began smoking marijuana as a child. California voters legalized the medicinal use of pot with the passage of Prop 215 two years ago. But the federal government doesn't recognize the state law. the judge to allow him to stay out until they could at least decide if he had actually broke his pretrial service agreement or not. He said, you know, I'm sure, I'm sure you don't need me taking up space in the prisons I know about the population problem. And as I was talking on the phone with him today, he says that there are people, four or five, he can't remember people that slept last night on cots in the TV room because they don't have enough beds. What do you do when the federal government doesn't recognize state laws? My name is Irvin Rosenfeld, and I'm one of seven people the government says in the United States that receives medical marijuana, medical cannabis from the federal government. I receive 12 marijuana cigarettes a day and have for 21 and a half years. The name of my disorder is multiple congenital cartilaginous exostosis, and a variant of the syndrome, pseudo-pseudo-hypoparathyroidism, which means in lay terms, bone tumors on the ends of long bones that can grow forever and I can develop new ones at any time. So if the federal government has legalized marijuana and the states have legalized marijuana, then who is keeping it illegal? Could it be the special interest groups? Could it be the prison guard union? Could it be the pharmaceutical industries? how powerful they have become to where they could rig our judicial system and pay judges and kill patients. With your uh, T-cell count in the 200,000s? 250,000. 250,000. What is the probability that, uh, that you'll make it through the year? Or Very low. I mean, if something doesn't change, the probability is extremely, extremely low that I'm going to make it to trial. Trial's in September, and this is the end of February. So with a viral load like that, um, the prognosis is dim. Last time your viral load hit in the 20,000s, you picked up a kind of cancer? Yeah, and my viral load was at 12,500 three years ago, which was the highest it's ever been prior to this. I had already developed non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, which is the most, second most common AIDS-related cancer. So now my viral load is 20 times higher than it was when I had already developed a fatal uh, a 
opportunistic illness. So you're almost like an exposed target to catching cancer at this point, is it's that? totally an exposed target to catching anything. There's 30 opportunistic infections I can catch, um, any one of which could wipe me out. Um, the fact that I developed cancer before, which you don't need to catch from anybody, that's already in your system. The fact that that, that, that cancer was there, and not Hodgkin's not lymphoma is a deadly form of cancer. It's, it's what killed Jackie Kennedy. So it's, uh, it's a virulent form of cancer. So to have that cancer again, and especially to have that cancer, I responded to chemotherapy with that cancer, but I also was able to use medical marijuana to keep down the chemotherapy right. medication. Exactly. So now I would be getting chemotherapy um, without the benefit of medical marijuana if I had to go back in again. Right. And so if I can't keep down AIDS medications, I'm not going to be able to keep down chemotherapy, which is even more nausea produced than the AIDS medication. So to put it simply, the longer you wait for the judge to make up his mind, uh, the more probable you will die. Yes. The longer it takes for the judge or for the judiciary or for the government to decide that in this case an exception should be made, the probability just the possibility, but the probability that I'm getting sicker and sicker. It certainly feels that way, but that I'm developing some opportunistic illness that cannot be treated um, is, is very high. And the longer the government waits, the more jeopardy I'm putting. Thus far, the government has waited patiently for six months while it's given me this day in court. We've been working We've been going through the system to get to this day in court ever since my arrest, essentially. And now that this day has come and gone, what, do, what does it look like for you now? Well, the judge will make his ruling. He'll do that in writing. Judge King will make a ruling. Uh, judge King will rule accordingly. Um, if Judge King rules in my favor, then I'll be able to use medical marijuana. If Judge King rules against me, then we'll appeal it to the Ninth Circuit Court. Uh, if Judge King rules in my favor, I would imagine the prosecution will also appeal it to the Ninth Circuit Court as well. Does the judge have a statute of time in which he has to send your case through so that you can be no. heard, or can this be no. drawn on out throughout the year? And the, ju you know? the judge can... Um, th there's no, no law that tells the judge when he has to come up with any response to this at all. Not a... There's nothing legally that tells him that. Uh, not cruel, morally, not but, cruel and unusual punishment, not I, nothing I like that. I believe the judge is truly concerned about this. The judge said that he was struggling mightily with this. I believe him when he says that. I don't think he's taking this lightly. I think he really is looking at the issue. I think he fully understands the issue. I think that he will make a decision after a great deal of soul searching on his part. Um, it is not an easy decision for him to make, um, and whatever the decision will be, um, will not be one that he will have arrived at um, easily. What we will have, however, is the benefit of his thinking on the decision. He will write a written opinion, which will almost certainly lay out his thinking and his determination and why he arrived at the conclusion he arrived at, whether it's favorable or unfavorable. I expect that within a week to ten days uh, from now. Well, I, I hope that that's the case because this certainly isn't the way that America wants to treat a New York Times best-selling author, I tell you that. I don't know. All the other authors, I'm just less competition. <laughs> I'm out of the way, you know. It's like yeah, possibly the, the, less, the less authors there are, the more spots on the New York Times list for all the other ones. That's you know? true. I didn't Absolutely. think about that. Now, authors, the, authors are vicious. Here's one for you. Which is, well, you know how the insurance companies are such a big lobby that they uh, uh, interfered with Hillary Clinton's health care plan. Oh, absolutely. So you know how much power they have. Enormous they should power. take out a bunch of life insurance, and the insurance companies will fight <laughs> for your rights. <laughs> That's a good idea. For me to get life insurance is about... It's about as likely as me getting late these days. <laughs> you know, it's like... <laughs> it sounds like a high concept for Hollywood to me. <laughs> you know, it's like, uh, we feel for you, but not enough. <laughs>
they did pass a law in California specifically for this reason. Why do you have to be jailed and arrested and, and kicked around literally by the uh, by uh, the police? For what reason? How did they get to you when the people of California said, yeah, Todd should have his marijuana if it in fact helps him? Well, what your listeners need to know is right now there is a big, a big fight between what is called federalism, that's our government's will to, to uh, rule over us, yeah. democracy, right. our ability to change the laws which we feel are unjust. And what we've witnessed in 1996 in November was over four and a half million Californians coming together and saying, you know, we think that the medical use of this substance is ridiculous and should be legal. It is absolutely not the same as someone just smoking a joint. Right. You know, for the hell of it. Mm -hmm. And what the federal government is saying, no, a war on drugs is just that, a war on drugs. And we do not care. We have no empathy for the sick and dying.